On today's episode of Flyer News, we have an all-new edition of Entertainment with Cassidy Slammon. And after that, we have a pressing story about the eviction from the Danforth Museum, and Benji Kling has a political update with 2016's political candidates. To wrap things up on today's show, we have a story about Stacey Scott and his superintendent position in Framingham. All that and more on Flyer News. Good morning, Framingham High School, and welcome to another edition of Flyer News. I'm Patrick Cassidy. And I'm Julie Carson. Today is Monday, May 25th, a day six with periods running D-A-B-E-G. The Billboard Music Awards occurred Sunday night, with many surprises and awards being given out. The entertainment crew has the scoop with who took home the hardware. Good morning, Premium High School, and welcome to Entertainment Weekly. Topping the box office this weekend was Angry Birds with $39 million. In second was Captain America Civil War at $33,114,000. And in third was Neighbors 2 with $21,790,000. On Sunday was the 24th annual Billboard Music Awards. The night featured several highlights, including Celine Dion being presented with the Icon of the Year Award. Earlier this year, the Canadian star faced the devastating loss of her brother and husband. Adele was the big winner of the night, taking home awards including Top Female Artist, Top Artist, and Top Album. Other big winners were Justin Bieber, The Weeknd, and Rihanna. DJ Calvin Harris was in a serious car crash on Friday. He was hospitalized and treated for a face laceration, among other injuries, when he was struck by a teenage girl driving an SUV, and is expected to return to his tour soon. Selena Gomez will be performing on May 28th at TD Garden, and Boston Calling is this weekend at the Boston City Hall Plaza. Ellie Goulding will also be performing at TD Garden on June 15th. That's all for this week's Entertainment Weekly. Tune in next week for new information and new location. I'm Cassidy Slam, and let's take it back to the desk. At the Wilson Ivy School, there was a bomb threat which led to students being asked to stay in their classrooms rather than evacuating. On Monday morning, May 23rd, students eventually evacuated from the school to the playground from an automated bomb threat call which came into the school around 10.09 a.m. According to Massachusetts State Police, this was only one of several robocalls which came to Massachusetts schools on Monday. Other locations that were threatened were Dover, Charlton, Attleboro, Medway, Somerset, Barnstable, Wellfleet, Mashpee, and Fall River schools. Although these calls are low threat, police reported that Framingham did a great job in responding quickly, where there has been countless amount of automated bomb threats that was this, this was the first to occur in Framingham. Recently, police have released footage that show Josue Flores, a Houston boy, moments before his fatal stabbing in broad daylight. On the surveillance footage, he can be seen crossing the street and starting on his route home after staying after school for a science club party. He was stabbed just a few blocks down from where the video was taken around 4.45 p.m. when witnesses heard loud screaming and saw Josue struggling with his attacker. Police found 11-year-old Josue collapsed in the grass adjacent to the sidewalk. According to the police, Josue was taken to Memorial Hermann Hospital to be treated for multiple stab wounds but was pronounced dead a short time later. Following the attack, authorities arrested the suspect, but he was ultimately released after he had a confirmed alibi. The Danforth Museum is being evicted on September 1st due to the cost of repairs inside. Now the Danforth is looking for an all-new location, and I got to take a closer look at this. Good morning, Premium High School. I'm Julie Carson. Recently, it was announced that the Danforth Museum and School is being evicted, along with the other occupants of the building, including the Performing Arts Center, the Police Athletic League Boxing Program, a radio club, and an artist guild. The Danforth Museum and Artist Guild were informed that they need to be out of the building by September 1st after the town of Framingham realized that the boiler and heating system was gone beyond repair, along with a leaking roof that only increased problems for the building. According to town manager Bob Halpin, the building is in very poor condition, and this should not be a surprise to anyone. Cost to repair the building would reach over $1 million, as estimated by Bob Halpin. According to the town of Framingham, the building is more of a liability than an asset. It has been recommended that the building is demolished after all the occupants have left. The Danforth Art Museum has made plans to move nearby Village Green and Framingham Historical Society, but it is a stretch that this plan will be ready by September 1st. 
Danforth issued a press release stating that Danforth Art will continue with summer programming as plans, and the immediacy of this move presents the organization with great financial and logistical challenges. Danforth Art has promised to provide more information as it becomes available in the coming weeks. Flyer News will continue to keep you updated, but for now, this has been Julie Carson. With options becoming much more limited, the presidential race looks to be narrowing down. Our local political psychic, Benji Kling, has a clear vision. Stars on the flag are never shining. Uh, I saw a butterfly in hell today. Well, I die well, but go Secretary to jail Clinton today. said, I will do it if other people do it. Well, here it is, Chris. There ain't none. I live by the sword and die by the sword. Now that the political race is officially down to just two candidates and that other guy, it's heating up with all the intensity we could have hoped for. With the California primary coming up on June 7th, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are airing attack ads against one another. Now for those of you who may not be familiar with how a primary works, this isn't it. Candidates typically run ads to try and win their party's nomination, you know, the entire point of the primary process, but these two are already going at it like a particularly old and deceitful married couple. Just look at Hillary's ad against Trump. I am a unifier. We're going to be a unified party. He is a con artist. A phony. Donald Trump is the know-nothing candidate. Donald is a bully. This is an individual who mocked a disabled reporter. Ah, uh, I don't remember! Who attributed a reporter's questions to her menstrual cycle. Blood coming out of her, wherever. The most vulgar person to ever aspire to the presidency. The man who seems to only feel big when he's trying to make other people look small. She's, and she's still technically running against what's-his-name. You know, that guy who's barely behind her but still apparently has no chance of winning? You know, skinnier Mikhail Gorbachev. Anyways, Trump's competition is gone, but that hasn't stopped him from getting started on Hillary already. Good thing he's already getting an early start on the intense swing state that is the liberal paradise of California. If anything, this ad is going to help that third wheel guy. You know, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Larry, uh, David's stunt double? <laughs> or, uh, something like that. Either way, the nasty general election is already on its way to expectations, and neither candidate has officially even been picked yet. Not even Trump, and he's just running against the name dropped out of the Ronald Reagan fan club. With my weekly take on the worst game of Would You Rather Ever, this has been Benji Kling. With Stacey Scott becoming a finalist in another job opportunity, the controversy of how reliable he really is as a superintendent has become becoming a question. Robin Kerr has the full story now. Framingham Superintendent of Schools, Stacey L. Scott, is one of six semifinalists for Superintendent of Schools in a school parish in Louisiana. It was first reported by the Framingham source that Scott was a finalist on Monday, May 23rd. There were 47 applicants for superintendent of Ascension Public Schools, which is a district with 22,000 students, including four high schools. This news comes recently after Scott was discovered to have an expired license for close to 11 months between June 2015 and April 2016. Scott currently has the proper licensure. Dr. Scott released a statement yesterday saying, as reported, I have been named a semifinalist for the role of superintendent of the Ascension Public Schools, Louisiana. I will keep you informed as new information arises. Framingham Source also reported that Scott did not have his superintendent license on May 3rd, which was before the deadline to apply for the school parish in Louisiana on May 15th. In a letter addressing his Cambridge candidacy back in October, Scott claimed he would work carefully with the FPS school committee to support a smooth transition so that we do not lose any of the momentum that we have created. Scott is finishing up his fourth year as superintendent of the Framingham Public Schools and his contract goes into June 2017. This has been Robin Kerr reporting for Flyer News. Up next on our show is the part where we pledge the flag. We have Kyle here in the studio, so take it away, Kyle.
Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, FHS. Today is a day six with periods running D, A, B, E, G. All right, today are senior D period exams, and we also have a varsity girls softball versus Brookline game at 3.45 p.m. That's it for me. More announcements. Good morning, Lacey. Hello. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of announcements this morning. So. Oh, no. Um, good morning. Um, just a reminder of upcoming events. Tomorrow night we are hosting the fashion show for seniors um, and it's also athletic awards night. Um, the fashion show will be in the auditorium and athletic awards night is in the gym. Um, so we will be there and try and be at two places at once. Um, so congratulations to everybody who's involved in that. Also um, we have science MCAS coming up so those of you taking the science MCAS please make sure that you're looking at where your rooms are. Um, there's a lot of students. It's our biggest administration of MCAS is next Wednesday and Thursday June 2nd and June 3rd. The order of the periods will not flip, um, so we will begin this test at 9 um, a.m. And I think that's it for me. Period D. Have a good day. Well, that wraps up today's show of Flyer News. You can catch this broadcast again on channels 8 Comcast, 15 RCN, and 41 Verizon Files at 5 and 8 o'clock. You can also see this and other <coughs> broadcasts on our YouTube channel. I'm Julie Carson. And I'm Patrick Cassidy. Have an awesome Wednesday for Amy High. by the lane with my hands in my pocket tingling away